I'm Alex Paulton. and I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Talking Time Pieces, where we talk about watch collecting and horology. Today, we're going to be looking at uh, this new uh, Elvington 2 chronograph from Ferrer. Uh, it's actually a cool watch for such a pretentious sounding name. Let's uh, turn the camera around and take a look at this uh, cool watch and a good candidate for a daily wear. Uh, but before we do that, please like this channel and subscribe if you haven't already. It really does help. And uh, we've passed 2,000 subscribers. Let's see how far we can go with this community. So let's turn the camera around and take a look at this interesting watch. Here's the uh, Fairer. It really is um, a nice box and presentation for a $600 watch. It comes in a pretty nice cloth padded on the top, zippered, a little harder on the bottom. Uh, but it, this would be suitable as a travel case, you know, for the watch. It's really a nice looking uh, case. See, good presentation. Uh, I've worn this watch before, obviously. I just wanted you to see how it's presented. Comes with a cloth. Comes with uh, its papers, a little manual. All nicely uh, put away. And there's the watch itself. Little snap hold downs. A uh, really good looking piece here. Let's put it on the stand so we can uh, look at it a little more closely. So there we go. And some of that. And zoom in. Okay. So um, it really is. A good looking piece very fresh uh, colorful watch it's the Ferrer Elvington 2 chronograph split-second flyback date watch um, they have this configuration and movement in other watches um, some discontinued this was the one I was able to get my hands on with the Swiss super quartz movement in it and um, as I was saying you know this is a very very functional quartz watch but it's a very quartz watch in the sense that um, it doesn't sugarcoat the fact that it's a quartz like a um, mecha quartz it basically doesn't uh, try to hide it it just works and it uh, has multiple functions which makes it a little bit more useful than the mecha quartz when you think about um, chronographs like here I'll show you what I mean we'll go in here and we'll first off it uh, says themselves that it's a split second chronograph so let's first off show the regular chronograph function as I was saying it's uh, not a mecha quartz so it's not sweeping in the um, second hand for the chrono but I don't think that that's a critical aspect I think an important thing is that it works properly if it's a chronograph and the additional functionality makes up for the fact that the second hand doesn't sweep you see so regular chrono operations reset what I think is interesting with most quartz chronos is they swing all the way around as opposed to popping back like a regular chrono see so look i mean for example here's a um rado captain cook uh i just picked it up we'll uh do an episode on it i just realized i didn't i gotta unscrew the uh pushers and um it is a very nice piece and it's well worth the money and i was able to get it at a decent uh discount and so it's definitely worth the uh, 3500 i paid for it so here so you start the uh, chrono, stop the chrono, reset the chrono. Now, the um, fairer, and like I said, a lot of other uh, quartz watches are different in that um, when you hit reset, it spins all the way around the dial. So I stop it here and I hit reset. It's not going to uh, pop back. It's going to swing all the way around. You see? Um, 
Which is an interesting touch. It shows you uh, that it's motor driven, uh, well, electrical motor driven. It's an electromechanical movement as opposed to being driven by uh, gears that uh, sometimes are easier to snap back with a spring than to run through its entire uh, movement cycle. So um, let's look at the flyback. I mean, well, first, let's look at the double chronograph aspect. So we've just seen the basic chronograph where you stop, start, reset. Now, this is a, a double chronograph, so I can hit this button, and as you see, one hand stops, and there's a second chrono hand. Now, what's interesting here is a lot of uh, flybacks, I mean, uh, uh, double chronographs that I've seen, the uh, bottom stop watch hand stops and the top one continues but in this one the top one stops and the bottom one continues i don't think it's a critical issue i do think it's interesting that when i hit the um stop and it catches up right in uh most flybacks when you hit stop it doesn't catch up this actually automatically caught up which um, I don't necessarily like, but then see it flew back to its starting point when I hit the start again. So it's a little interesting the way that um, it presents the data. So if I hit the double chronograph button, it does do the uh, retropont catch up. But what I think is interesting is that if I have it in the double mode and I stop it, it catches up automatically. Where in um, most mechanical double chronographs, the second chronograph hand stays static until you uh, either stop it or reset everything with the reset button. Now, uh, the other function that this has is a flyback mechanism in the, let's reset, okay, in a flyback, you hit the watch, stopwatch function, the chrono function, and when you hit the reset button, it flies back to the 12 and continues. So in this case, again flew forward it did not fly backwards see so hit stop hit reset um, I'll show you an example of that I happen to have a uh, Walkman chrono let's zoom in and this is a flyback hit start And hit flyback it snaps right back because the way uh, these mechanical watches operate it usually is like I said um, spring driven so it de it disengages the gear lets the uh, hand snap back to its start position and then re-engages the gear um, to reduce the amount of actual physical wear in the mechanism and reset uh, because in the case of the quartz watch it doesn't matter you know it's just a, a motor so and it's so because it's an electric motor it's easier to just snap it forward to its uh, reference points or to its well it's electronically controlled to its electronically uh, determined points than it is to have it snap back using some kind of a spring mechanism. So it's more interesting, you know, to have it um, snap forward to its uh, start position instead of snapping back because there are no spring-loaded mechanical mechanisms. I know that was redundant, sorry. There are no spring-loaded mechanisms to return the second hand, so it's easier for the motor to just snap that hand back forward. Um, on the back side, it's just nicely engraved. It has uh, the Fairer logo. Let's zoom. Let's clean this up a little bit and then zoom in. All right, has the Fairer logo. Tells you a little bit about the piece. And uh, 
all in all, a very nice package. I like the fact that the uh, strap has quick releases, um, which means that, uh, well, first off, they offer you a bunch of different straps with the watch. I chose this color to match the uh, strap and my proclivity towards blue, so I got a dark blue to go with it. I've also put it on black straps and straps of other um configurations and it's worked out very well on them but let's take a look at this what this looks like on the wrist uh, oh before i do that i want to show you one more aspect of the functionality so you saw it do the flyback you saw it do the double chronograph um, um you know one of the interesting things about this piece is that it has a flying uh hour hand you know like the omegas um I think the Aquaterra and the Seamaster both do it. Uh, actually, I think almost all the uh, high-end uh, Omega three-handers have a flying hour hand. So you can do the time zone thing um, with it. It won't track a second time zone, but if you're traveling with it, you can um, shift the hour hand without disrupting your timekeeping. So I thought that was a nice touch. Uh, so like I said, it's very, very quartz, but it's very, very functional and it's a great daily wear watch and um, it looks really good. So let's put it on the wrist and see what it looks like. Um, it's a 39 and a half millimeter watch and it's got a sapphire box crystal, box sapphire crystal. See, it has a nice little um, dome effect to it, kind of like an old timey effect that uh, some watchmakers uh, do with their sapphire crystals and it looks nice you know especially if you're shooting for a uh, retro-ish look like this one is so a uh, wristwatch check i'm wearing my um, jlc polaris let's take that off and um, let's throw this on the wrist The leather strap feels nice. I didn't uh, try the rubber strap, but um, I must admit I'm not a big rubber strap fan. Occasionally, I'll wear a rubber strap like I did like wearing the uh, blue Aquaterra rubber strap on my uh, blue Seamaster GMT, which I wound up finding one with box and papers, so I'm re-adding it to the collection. Uh, we'll look at that with a couple of different straps on it as well. I'll do a re of re-review of that piece when I get it back in my hands. So you see the fairer sits very nicely. It's a really good daily wear piece. You could see yourself wearing this with uh, jeans and a polo shirt or with business casual, which I guess today is pretty much jeans and a polo shirt. Um, but uh, this would also work with a business suit and uh, really nice looking piece, very functional, and it would be a great uh, daily wear watch for anybody. Let's take a quick look at how it would look with a different strap since we've got the uh, disconnect on it and um, have some fun. See what this watch looks like because a daily wear should be versatile enough to wear with a bunch of different straps. So let's check that part out. And there it is on a NATO. Uh, it really is a uh, versatile piece. Let's see how that looks on the wrist. Da -da -da. There we go. We'll even tuck it. So, see, so the the, the uh, color pattern really makes it come across very well with a uh, Bond NATO sharp looking piece, and like I said, very functional, quartz, reasonably water resistant, very reasonably priced. Uh, the fairer, yeah, it's a nice piece. It sits well on the wrist for its size. And uh, since I was swapping straps around, here it is on a Milanese, you know. The nice thing about it being a 20 millimeter is that it'll take most of the straps in your strap box. And as I'm fond of saying, if you've got a watch with three straps, you've pretty much got three watches. You know, you really can have a nice... Um, arrangement, variety, you know, fun with your pieces, you know? So you could uh, jazz it up well also.
Here it is on a bund strap I picked up on Amazon. You see, it's actually quite a nice uh, piece. It looks really good in all kinds of straps. It's a really nice daily wear candidate in that sense. It looks good. It's very, very functional. And um, yeah, reasonably priced. So that was the uh, Elvington 2. Uh, like I said, a cool watch with a little bit of a oddly pretentious sounding name. I guess they were shooting for the retro uh, design, a name appropriate. But uh, all in all, a really nice watch and a good candidate for somebody's uh, daily wear. It's inexpensive, but it's uh, rugged enough to wear just about any place you're going to take an office casual watch. Have a great day. Take care. Thank you.